now. So as we walk through this, this is Saturday, 6 in the morning. Europeans pretty close to the northern edge of Cuba, so that would tell you that just possibly there could be some interaction here. We don't know if it comes by and skirts over. I mean, again, you've got 10, 15, 20 miles difference here, north or south, and that's a big difference of being over some of the warmest waters around, warmer than they are now, or getting over land and seeing this thing get its fuel line choked a little bit. If we go a little bit now from Saturday at 6 in the morning, we'll stop it here. Once again, there is a slight variation between the two. This is the European, this is the American, but they're pretty close together. And once again, keep in mind, the storm surge, that, that's the area where you're going to have the winds wrapping in around and coming in. That's your storm surge. This is what we saw, uh, of course, with Harvey, and you had those bands of heavy rain sliding in. You'll see possible tornado watches. We had over 200 tornado warnings just with Harvey that moved through again. But it's the storm surge that's a big concern coming in and pushing the water up uh, Biscayne Bay. Now, let's go a little farther. That is Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We'll slide a little further north. The European and the bright pink slides directly across the entire state without sliding really to one coast or the other. Again, the strongest winds, when you talk about we're now at 165 miles per hour, it's going to get stronger, probably get back to 170, 175. Those strong winds are only in the eye wall. So don't think that everyone is going to have 170 mile per hour winds. But when you are in that eye wall, you're talking about having an EF3 tornado. And we know the damage it does in some of the communities anywhere in the U.S., like such as Oklahoma and the Southern Plains. That's like an, uh, the winds of an EF3 tornado for hour after hour after hour, eight, 10 hours, and we know the damage. Now, the U.S. model is half on the coast near Daytona Beach, up toward Jacksonville, half on the coast, half off the coast. That could still be considered enough over water to continue that engine going, because if you're over land, remember, you're choking that fuel line with this, but it's going to take several hours for that to happen. I mean, this is still a massive hurricane. Don't expect it just to drop down to a tropical depression. And by that time, it really doesn't matter. You're in significant damage. But then you're still getting the bands of the water and, of course, the storm surge, then into Jacksonville. Last year, when Matthew stayed off the coastline, thank goodness it did, because the difference being off the coast, that's where the catastrophic damage is, and then inland we had light to moderate. But he just slid it over on the coast, and everybody's in catastrophic damage like which it is now. Model, Jacksonville flooded greatly, of course, and that system was offshore. Which model, Tom, has been more accurate? Has it been the, um, the U.S. model or the European yeah. model? Well, the European handled Harvey tremendously uh, to an unfortunate end. And as mentioned last Thursday, the European was here. It has not wavered most of the week. There's been some, you know, variations, and that's typical, even if you're trying to forecast, you know, a rainfall uh, in your backyard seven days out. You expect some variation, but it's just been amazing how the European's been there. The U.S. model has gradually trended toward this. There's going to be differences because they use different mathematical equations and logarithms. They take in account of, of different factors of the environment. I mean, by looking at these two, we call them two models, there are 70, over 70 models that encompass these two. There's 50 for the European, there's 21 for the U.S. Uh, the European has better resolution. Uh, it takes longer to run the model. Uh, I think it's like a good eight hours or so. We run the U.S. a couple more times because there's only 21 in the ensemble, the models. But there, you can't ask for a closer agreement. And this was like this days away, Don. I mean, it's really a stunning. You know, and if I can just get on a soapbox here, this is why the administration and no one in Washington should cut the funding for NOAA. I mean, this is why it took years and years to develop this. It's the best in the world. If you cut the funding, then you don't improve it anymore, and you go backwards without the resources. And while you're at it, don't cut FEMA either, right? This is crazy what's going on with this, and my fear is the unknown across the entire state. And then even if it makes its way northward, we'll be watching flooding. I mean, we could have flooding again in parts of the southeast and Tennessee Valley. And that goes right, on and on. Yeah, right up to where some of the folks are going, even up in, in Atlanta. I've been speaking to my friends in Atlanta and now becoming concerned. Uh, Tom, I need you to stand by. Mayor, uh, thank you for joining us. I don't think this changes anything. And listen, the severity with the warning, it does. But your message is, folks, get out, get out, get out while you can. Uh, the mayor of Miami Beach, Phil Levine. Philip Levine, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Don. I want to bring in now CNN's Brian Todd, and Tom Sater is going to stay with us. So, Brian, you're down in Palm Beach for us tonight. This expanded hurricane warning just being issued tonight for a bigger part of southern Florida. What are you seeing there? 
Well, Don, what we're seeing is a lot of people walking around very concerned. We're seeing uh, officials telling us that they are especially concerned about the elderly population. Palm Beach County has a high concentration of retirees, elderly people. Uh, mandatory evacuations are going to start in Palm Beach in earnest at 10 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. We're standing on West Palm Beach right now, just across the intercoastal waterway. You can see behind me maybe just a shimmer of the water. This is the intercoastal. It's about five feet below where I'm standing. Now, we're told that we're going to be able to expect five to ten feet of storm surge when the storm hits in earnest. A lot of the time, us reporters talk about storm surge. We don't talk about what it really means. When you talk five to ten feet of storm surge, that means five to ten feet above normal levels, so that it would come to about where I'm standing, plus wave activity on top of that. So they are concerned here. Mandatory evacuations are going to take place across the waterway at Palm Beach tomorrow at 10 a.m., because that's a lower-lying area. That's a barrier island here in West Palm. It's going to be a voluntary evacuation starting at 10 a.m., but in some areas it could be mandatory. Uh, again, with the elderly population.